Great day, and we can also say welcome back, Jackie, to Jim Autry. He mm -hmm. is author. We've had, a, luckily enough, a chance to chat with him in a previous occasion. But you're back. You have something else we want to talk about yes, here this morning. Do. What do we have this morning? Well, this is uh, book number 13, but who's counting? <laughs> 13. <laughs> Everybody. 13. <laughs> yeah. And this is a, a selection of poems from all the books I've published, only two of which have been poetry books. I've published poetry in areas of management and leadership mm -hmm. and this is a selection from that plus 25 new poems and it's called on paying attention new and selected poems so this is like a best of then well yes look at it plus some as, as my wife says your greatest hits <laughs> there it is there, there may be people at home who are hearing your name and, and saying boy I, I know that name from somewhere could you talk about your background a little bit well, a lot of people know me from Meredith Corporation, where I worked for 32 years. I was president of the magazine group, and other, others know me as an author, uh, written management books. The first one that was fairly successful was called Love and Profit, The Art of Caring Leadership, and my recent one is The Servant Leader. But my first two books were poetry, written back in the, uh, published in the 80s. And was this something you started to do when you, when you were young, the poetry? Because you, you don't see a lot of young people that, that read and, and write poetry, and how did that all happen? Well, particularly in my era, you didn't see a lot of people writing poetry. Uh, I didn't write it in high school, but in college, you know, when I, in English classes, I wrote some poetry. People would be thankful that none of that is in this book. <laughs> <laughs> what, what got you to start writing poetry? What was your first inspiration to write poetry? Uh, well, the first inspiration back in college was failed love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, in the 70s, uh, there was a lot of trauma in my life, divorce, death of my father, my brother. And I was in San Francisco, and I heard James Dickey, a wonderful writer and poet, reading his poetry. On, on t and. Uh, I thought, well, I could try that. So I'd been out in a dinner, a couple of glasses of wine, went back to my hotel and wrote six perfectly awful poems. <laughs> and perfectly happy to know, awful. You'd be happy to know none of those is in this. <laughs> but that started me, and then I spent a lot of my life up here, moved to Des Moines in 1960, trying not to be a white Southerner. I'd grown up in the South, I'd gone to segregated schools, in college, I was among the students who wanted to integrate the university, which did not make me very popular but down there. And so when it got to a certain point in my life, I realized for better or for worse, I am what I am as part of that background. So the, my first two books were about my childhood. The first one was called Nights Under a Tin Roof, Recollections of a Southern Boyhood. And the second one was called Leaving Mississippi. And um, those books, particularly the first one, I got some attention when I was on a series called The Power of the Word, put on by Bill Moyers. Okay. On TV. And uh, that started my poetry, but then I moved away from it after I went through what I call the Mississippi years, and, and then I started writing business poetry. What is, what is business poetry? Well, I had a situation in which I was, I was going to have to fire somebody. It's a very emotional event, firing someone. You're, you're taking an event, you're taking their life, you're taking one of, their, one of the ways they find meaning in their life, through their work. It's refreshing to hear somebody say that because I think a lot of people wouldn't put that much heart into it, you know what oh. I mean? Well, that's what part of my work has been about, love and profit. It was about the emotional aspects of management, the emotional highs and emotional lows of management. So I wrote this poem called On Firing a Salesman. And I was going to speak at a, at a conference, and just on a lark, I thought, I think I'll read that poem. It's a bunch of business people, mostly men. And I read that poem, and I looked out and saw some, some glistening eyes, and I thought, you know, maybe this is what I should be doing. So I began to write more business poetry, and in Love and Profit, probably half that book is poetry. Life and Work, probably half of that book is poetry. And so, uh, if I have any reputation as a poet at all, it is as working in that field of writing poetry about business and specifically about management. Why poems instead of like short stories or you know phrasing or things like that? Why why poems? Good question. The answer is I don't really know. Okay. Um, or what do you define as a poem? Like, are you doing like 
Well, I'm, I'm is, is it just a quick statement or a quick story? Is it rhyming? What, what does it mean to you? Jack, I think of myself as a storyteller. Mm -hmm. And some of my stories are short stories and books and others are poetry. Poetry is a very efficient way to use the language. William Faulkner once said that, that a novel is difficult, a short story is even more difficult, mm -hmm. and, a, and a poem is hardest of all. So you try to compress within those few words emotion, imagery, idea, story, and uh, it's challenging and it works for me well, depending on the material. There's mm -hmm. some things that don't lend themselves to poetry. So that's sort of my background and how I got into this, and uh, I was delighted. My, pu my publisher wanted to do this anthology. I've always wanted to do a collection of my poetry, and he wanted to do this book. I thought, why? I mean, <laughs> I, mean I, I love it, but there's no money in poetry. <laughs> of course, my friend Roger Rosenblatt says, well, that's true, but of course there's no poetry and money. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> nice Valid reversal point. of yeah. words. Well, can you give us an example this morning? Well, what do you want to hear? I well, pick something you have a good. Short, you have a short one in there you can uh, give us an example? Well, I have a lot of short ones, but I have some long ones, too. Um, here's one that's fairly short that, that is, is a sort of a throwback from the business life into the earlier life. It's called Educated Fool. Okay. My grandmother used to talk about educated fools. All they do is sit at a desk, never do any work. And I dreamed about how easy that would be, sitting at a desk instead of sweating in the sun and dirt, instead of chopping cotton or picking up potatoes or pulling weeds, instead of fighting flies and sting worms and wasps and sometimes a snake. Educated fool didn't sound so bad. All desks and telephones and secretaries, eating in some air-cooled cafe instead of trying to find a dark spot of tree shade on the edge of a field with a sausage and biscuit and a jug of tea, nobody to talk to but a mule or a dog. You know what comes next, of course. You know I'm writing this at my desk on a Thursday, and day after tomorrow I'll put on bib overalls, the neighbors thinking what an affectation, and pull weeds for the composter, and dig a place for a late row of greens, most of them going to seed instead of in the pot, and tell myself, what the hell, I just want to dig the dirt and watch the stuff grow, an educated fool at last. <laughs> I love that. Very relatable. <laughs> that is awesome. Thank you. But uh, you're going to have a book signing. Uh, it's going to be going on tomorrow from noon to about 1.15 or so. So uh, go on over and check this out. Jim's going to be there, 1000 grand at the Central Library, Des Moines Central Library. Yes. Uh, you're going to have uh, your book with you, so? I will have my book with it. will probably be 50 or 60 in case anybody wants okay, to. Okay, just in case. Just in case. I think you're going to be getting rid of a you whole know, bunch I know of that there are authors out there so suave and sophisticated they're bored by writing you know signing their own books it's my favorite sport <laughs> <laughs> I like this do you have more poems and stories in you are we gonna see some uh, new material out of you soon Pro I don't know how soon but I've always I'm always writing You're always and writing. Uh, I've, I've written a novel which I cannot get published uh, it's called it's based on my three years in France during the Cold War as a jet fighter pilot it's oh, called uh, really. Yeah, it's called the Cold Warrior. When flying was dangerous and sex was safe. <laughs> it's got a catchy it's title. A, it's got a great it's title. It's got a great title. <laughs> I don't know why. Do you have a rough draft we can steal from you one of these? I, I want to read that. Book. I have a draft you can read. <laughs> there you go. All right. If anybody <laughs> wants to get a hold of Jim, get a hold of us, and we'll pass it along to him so we can get this thing published. We have to Jeez. see what this is about. That sounds great. Jim, good to see you again. Thank you. It's great great to be stuff again. Show everybody the book you. again. On paying attention is the name of the collection. The yeah. collection, oh, yeah. uh, new and selected poems, available Barnes and Noble, Amazon, duh, of course, or even better, go to the library tomorrow Central between library. noon and 1.15 or so, see Jim, get it signed, get a copy Wonderful. of your book yourself. So Beaverdale Books has a good supply. Beaverdale Books, too. Yeah. Go Perfect. There you go. Wonderful. Good. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's 8.34. We'll be right back. You're watching Great Day Live on KCWO.